Wait, that'd be dope if I could do this little bit though. Cause you know I'm about to fucking mind y'all that. Can you try this? Try that. How about this? Yeah, yeah. What's good, family? So the last word that we posted on the IG page, if you're not following us already, we walking together on Instagram at Light Power. And in a minute, I'm gonna talk to you guys about the other. Uh, communication efforts and solutions that we're bringing to the table because we need them now more than ever. Uh, the last word we spoke on was conjecture, all right? And the word conjecture is something that came through in a download, like literally one of my meditations. I got some information from my meditation. And one of those words in there was conjecture, and that opened up a whole nother download. So I want to share that second one with y'all. Because I can actually kind of package that a little bit easier. And it transform. I literally had to do a lot of releasing the day I found this word. Because it brought so much so much into picture that I could not help but see. So it just helped me like really understand like the evidence of trauma in a context. Sometimes it breeds more trauma unless you're standing at the door of your mind and understanding how you're creating a meaning. So that's what we're going to be talking about. So boom, like if y'all have ever watched, we're going to jump right into this. So if y'all ever watched the, uh, or read the book, uh, the four agreements, one of the agreements is to not make assumptions, right? And if you think about that, you normally con con come to the conclusion of like not jumping to conclusions basically. Right. And, um, we do this in our personal relationships and, you know, family, friends, romance, whatever it is. But the highlight of this video is about you and yourself you and yourself and the way in which you make assumptions because the assumptions that you make mentally are the story that you're writing subconsciously and you're living by your story you actually eat your story every day so you live out the story that you write in your mind based on your uh actions and your thoughts so we're gonna get right into this so we can do the finer tuning so we can know exactly that's how i like to do things i like to just get to know so when this word came I had to come to the conclusion that a lot of my trauma I created. I had to come to that conclusion myself. Had to. And um because like the word conjecture, let's let's put up that definition right quick. Let me go ahead and give y'all that definition right quick. Well I know that already. It means to come to an opinion or a conclusion without or with incomplete information. So it's coming to a conclusion or an opinion with incomplete information, meaning that you only have half of the story and you tell the end of the story because you feel like you got half. I, I pretty much know how this is going. <laughs> and you just have that in your mind. That's, you just keep walking around with it. And that's a natural way. We shorten we shorten the, like the information that way. It helps us actually uh, move through life faster when we do that. But I want to get to the details of how we do this subconsciously in a negative form from the energy of fear, from the context of how we've been programmed and the beliefs and the meanings those people that we've come from, our parents and our ancestors, have had to embrace through, due to the circumstances that they embrace, embrace through the living civilizations and the time periods. So we don't have to go that far. We can talk about our parents right now, the last ones, mom and dad. We can talk about them because it's going to be the same patterns in meaning and meaning attribution that we have genetically because we've come from their genes. So, um, boom, uh, let's go into this right here. Um, so boom, an opinion or conclusion formed on the basis of incomplete information. So this is how it works. Let's just say I'm gonna make a story so that we can just see it and then we'll know exactly what we're both talking about. So imagine there's a, uh, Jack and, and Jill, all right? And Jack and Jill just got together, start hanging out, start connecting, be sharing information. Cool, right? And then uh, three years later, you know, they're not in a relationship, but they real tight. You dig what I'm saying? And um, they get into a conversation and they're wondering, like, you know, what's the purpose of this problem showing up in their conversations all the time? And it turns a little sour. Now, you've been... You've been linking up for three years. Y'all been real solid then. You know what I'm saying? To not go nowhere else with it. To hold it down like that. Y'all been real solid. So three years is some good investment. Like you you probably 
you probably care about this person you be checking up on them and things like that right boom so then uh y'all get into this moment where it's like you know we're not seeing eye to eye on, on a particular subject and y'all start talking for like two months then you pull up at this grocery store because you're about to get the greens right you pull up to this grocery store and you see jill right how do you feel when you try to be you know grounded and open you know what i'm saying holding a space right and uh you know jill approach you she's like hey jack what's up i haven't seen you in a minute da 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 y'all get to it and then it seemed like it's chill right and then she's trying to say that she wants to actually reconvene the energy she wants to balance out the energy she want to talk about what's been going on but it ended really sour like y'all should never want to re-experience that super sour like that shit was sour bro like this if anybody else was there would have been more problems <laughs> type sour right so boom you like i'm never i don't want to see her anyway <laughs> type vibe after that you know what i'm saying after that it's like damn i'm not trying to have no fucking hurricane in the house but <laughs> you know what i'm saying so boom then uh she said she's gonna call you all right boom so now all right she said we're gonna have this conversation on the phone at seven all right cool talk to you later check out get my greens going home right seven o'clock all right boom so it's five i guess i'm gonna just do a couple of things and you know, get myself situated and shit. Seven, I'm gonna be talking to sister, so I'm gonna just, you know, get stuff settled right now. 6.30 come, let me text her and make sure we still good. <laughs> Send her a text, 6.30. All right, we still talking at seven? You still calling at seven? Um, you ain't getting no text back. <laughs> 6.58. 6 no message. 658 no message. <laughs> 702. You like, damn, what the fuck? Not really, but you ready to go there already. Because it's like, you know, I try to confirm and everything. Like, this is my evening right now. Like, <laughs> so guess what happens? 710 come, you like, fuck, I'm about to call this girl because <laughs> I'm not gonna be sitting over here hoping and wishing. I don't even think it take too long. I should have called her at 7 o'clock myself. Yeah, damn. <laughs> don't answer. Don't answer. <laughs> so what you think? How are you going to feel right now? How are you going to feel? Because the evidence gives you a lot of reason to feel. And I want y'all to write that down, man. That shit got to be real. Because I think I'm going to have to write that. Because reason to feel because that should give you a reason to feel and you're gonna feel some kind of way right there because you done already had to put up with a couple minutes in the supermarket had to compose yourself and all this other things then we got to the time and then we sent the call ahead make sure double check time secure no message okay so let's see no nothing all right boom 45 minutes energy drain into the swamp and this shit ain't nothing bring nothing back so boom, what you gonna feel like? Well, that gives you a lot of reason to feel. You might feel like, fuck wrong with this girl, man. Fuck it, I don't even want to. I don't even want her to call. Fuck it, I don't even care. Forget it. <laughs> we gonna toss this night up like a salad, and we gonna figure some shit out. <laughs> Type shit, right? So boom, what's next? What's next? You might come to a conclusion. Oh well, maybe she was just putting up a front. Because at the store, she was just trying to look like she really liked uh, our connection. And she was really just, oh, maybe because she just saw me. Oh, your mind, the mind is just going to be like trying to tell you what happened. And the only reason why I can say this is because I'm aware of my own mind now. Because I've seen my mind try to make me think things like that based on the context. And the context speak for a motherfucking self. So it's like sometimes the context is correct. Sometimes if you're not reading that shit correctly then damn, <laughs> you know, you was really hopeful, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, that shit, you know, so if that's how it looks, sometimes it's easy to come to a conclusion, but I want to talk about how we make these conclusions within ourselves, because it's one thing to lie to somebody else, but the biggest lie that you can lie is the one to yourself, and I gotta say, because uh, I didn't lie to myself a lot, I didn't lie to myself a lot, so if I think about my 
story, right? The frame in which the society mold the mind is from a negative polarity. So I look at what was not in my story. And that's what I hope and hold on to as a reason to something. You know what I'm saying? Oh, well, I had a single mother. So, I mean, I didn't really have a single mother, but that's like how the mind directly thinks because it looks to utilize its ab adversity as a reason. You know what I'm saying? And that could be true in its logical sense but i want to talk to you guys about the meanings that we can make about certain things like this because the meanings that we make around our story either drains our energy or gives us energy and this is the internal switch that we need to make it's really about understanding how the mind makes meaning on things it's kind of like uh that's why the word assumption is there because the mind comes to its own meaning about something, right? But before you get onto an assumption, you flow into conjecture. And I need to like break it down to pieces because that's how you're going to see when you're doing it. And then you can stop doing it, especially on the areas that matter most, like your bank balance. And I'm going to talk directly to that at the end of this. So, uh, boom, let me show you all this image of what it looks like of how this conjecture energy looks like because I, I found a really really cool way to illustrate it it i think this one kind of came from the download too because like once i seen it in my mind i was like yeah i gotta find a way to make that oh, i just realized this video got pulled into it but let me show y'all this boom so on y'all screen right now yep y'all can see this uh this ball of yarn right and in the center of the ball of yarn it's like a time space time galaxy loop just forget about that for right now just focus on the fact that there's two colors of yarn and they looped up together in this ball right and the black yarn on the far left is the same as the same length as the yellow yarn all right and the only difference is the black yarn symbolizes the current time the current truth and the current observation so if a cat f walked across the street <laughs> at two o'clock, everybody's seen it. It's the same color. You can't change it. That's exactly what happened. You know, that's pretty much the example. Just it, rec it, it pretty much uh, resembles the literal, right? And then the other string is yellow, and that one pretty much resembles the meaning that your mind is tr attributes to it so for example our brother uh jack when he didn't get the phone call you know that's a real thing like she said seven o'clock it came out her lips and seven o'clock came and she didn't get nothing so that was some real shit it was on the black line but what he thought it was was whatever he thought because it's up to him to make the meaning on what his experience is. This is what it is to be understand, understood of the God energy and managing your energy and managing your uh, reaction or your proaction. Because if you get proactive, you get ahead of your meanings, you create positive meanings. The reason why is because when you create negative meanings, your mind remembers that that's how you attribute meaning. So then it just continually finds the same ways or new ways to attribute that particular meaning on new things so it's like that's the reason why people get stuck in relationships in the relationship the same way as the last relationship because they be thinking or subconsciously real uh, uh, subconsciously accepting that XYZ behaves in this direction so they just keep getting the same thing because subconsciously that's what they believe so the reality had to give them what they believe so right now my reality is giving me freedom and um, fucking prosperity thank you like that I like that <laughs> so yeah but if you start to make positive meanings, then that's how your mind going to start attributing things to things. It's like the loop. The loop is the assumption, the conjecture. And I'll even get straight to it because I know everybody in the whole world, especially myself, have a feeling when they look at a bank account. And if you look at your bank account and your bank account got a number in there that you don't feel so excited about, watch what your mind say about that. Because that's the conjecture. The conjecture is pretty much the turn onto the assumption. So if we're driving down the street and both sides is truth and assumption, the motherfucking <laughs> conjecture is the stop sign. But niggas don't be seeing that shit. So it's like, 
oh, you know, hit this motherfucker right over here. I'm about to hit my man, see if I can buy, you know, what comes to your mind? Because whatever comes to your mind is basically how you me meaning your life. And you have to eat your meanings, basically, because you created it. So for me personally, I could create a meaning that say, my family didn't support me. That's a statement. Even though it was a past statement, it holds a lot of weight to be heard all over again. You dig what I'm saying? Because that's just like right now, even though it was then. Because time is not a real thing in the context of the way in which we uh, observe it. It's really a four-dimensional thing in which it always lives, basically. So for that statement to be really true, they would have to speak meaning to that. But the meaning is not true because the meaning is my person, my personality observation of the experience and not a higher spiritual observation of that same experience. I'll explain that. They say that there is four, there's like uh, four ways to observe the body. There's an etheric, the uh, mental, the emotional, and then the physical. I think I might go ahead and just write this, but I'm trying not to get all into this editing right here because we're going to have to see how I finish. All right, solid. We got it just like that. All right, cool. So we have the spiritual, we have the mental, right? So these are the four layers of our body in the context, all right? So let me run through them real quickly so that we can understand where this conversation fits in the context of our multi-layered body, all right? Now, it's not something to get spooky about or something like that. This is just an observation in, uh, in separation, but we are uniform and uni unified in our form and our function. It's like God and a man. You can't really separate them. You can observe them differently, though. This basically that. So... Um, the spiritual body is basically being presently aware of your conscious energy and your conscious energy as self, okay? Because from here is the source of what our energy is in a natural sense. And as we observe our self, the self that we observe is the mind that we have because our mind tell us who, who, tell us who we are when we look in the mirror or how other people see us when they look at us. So this basically all the layers of the ego from here. You dig what I'm saying? And if you observe in this, then you'll basically understand that when you have um, when you have control over your mental body, you can't really do nothing with your mental body without having your physical body. You know what I'm saying? So like these are like this, like these are encapsulated together because you can't even you can't even like how like you know you need your your physical body to to express your your mind. If you're gonna express your mind, you're gonna speak, you're gonna draw, you're gonna write something. I tell my, you know what I'm saying, tell my arm to move. So like my mind, tell my body to move. You know what I'm saying? They're connected. In the same exact way, the emotional is basically what comes in through the physical, but it's interpreted through the mind, you know? So the mind, basically the eyes and the ears, I hear some bad news, I see something going on that triggers my emotional body. So they're all connected, basically. I just want to explain that. Um, so when you understand that, right, this act, this observation from the spiritual standpoint is to notice when these two these two inputs are these two like when when experiences on these two levels change or trigger something on this level because when it's triggered up here it's within the subconscious realm makes basically it's in the feminine part of the mind is being fertilized or neutral in an into it fertilize into neutrality so that it can grow in a positive direction even if it grows it might not be something you want but it's still going to grow in a positive direction even if you don't want weeds you planted them they're growing type thing so um i wanted to illustrate that so that when we talk about the conjecture the conjecture happens right here this is where it it basically is triggered at all right on the emotional level like our brother in the story our brother in the story, he was like a little bit invested. You know what I'm saying? He was a little invested. He was looking forward to, right? And what happened? Something else happened in the context. And the context gave him reason to feel. And the reason to feel mad and felt like 
uh, shoddy Jill was on some sour shit is because the context made us look like that. We've been friends for three years. You did some wild shit on the last in, in, interaction, decided you're not going to see each other no more. Randomly see you a couple, couple months later, you look like a princess. You say he's going to call you, didn't call. You know what I'm saying? That shit make it look like, damn, you, your great report out of whack, shoddy. <laughs> that's what it make it look like, right? But that's a story just to illustrate it. So boom, let's talk about conjecture in a personal sense. Like I was explaining my own personal story. I used to say certain things or think certain things like, you know, my family didn't support me. Why? The meaning I attributed to that was based on my own personal perspective. That was from an emotional response. And because that was from an emotional response, it was from an egoic response because my ego is part of my human body. It's part of my shit. So if I'm going to be emotional about something, well, who's emotional? You know what I'm saying? What is the emotion? What is the energy from? What, what, you know what I'm saying? What triggered who? You know, that's you right there. That's your ego right there. That's the lower nature that is the physical form part you did. And for that, to make a, 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 not a law, but more so like something like it, you know, to make a decree based on that, you know, that's like, that's not, that's not me. You know what I'm saying? Because if I had a, a spiritual observation at that moment, I would understand that I'm supposed to be learning something from whatever this is trying to trigger me rather than creating more trauma. So now this is the reason why I showed y'all this, this yarn, because now if I created this trauma, right, it's basically, look at this little ball right here. Like it's basically going to be a knot in the, in the ball. And the ball is basically the same length. The strands are the same length. So if you've you been on a, a year for a quarter, 25 years, then you should, let's say, 25 inches long, right? And this story that I just explained happened for somebody when it was eight. So they got a couple of knots in eight, okay? And this is called childhood trauma. And this is the reason why you got to go back in time, which is called time travel, which is really just looking at your story. And you can go there, like I just said, time is four dimensional, so you can go any place in time in your time span with your mind. You just got to use your thoughts and um, have somebody to hold the space so that you can stay there for a little bit, like have some conversation about it. That's how you go there and you are able to reweave these threads together so they did not knot it, basically. Um, and when you're able to do that, then you can actually look at your whole story and see only reason to be grateful for everything that you see because you kind of trained your mind and changed the way in which you saw your story so then every part of your story gives you power now every single part of your essence is your story and you change your story in a positive direction based on how you choose to see your story i know that was a lot i know that was a lot I felt it but it's based on how you choose to see your story because i i could have chosen to be like yeah i wasn't support they ain't support me but they support me more than anybody in the whole world. Why? Because they hold a space. You dig what I'm saying? There's a perfect family for me. Like, I, I always get the right things. And this family, the best family in the whole world. So, you know, they gave me all the lessons I needed. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, who's always going to teach me certain things? How's my supposed to learn these things? You think, you think about that? And even if some of the things you learned were things that came in a painful ways, you learned them. Now you have the knowledge now. So you have the knowledge now. So is it worth getting that? You know, think about that. That's something to think about. So yeah, family, um, this is conjecture. Conjecture is creating a, uh, unfinished, creating an opinion on uh, incomplete information. And I need people to understand this so that they can actually know that their mind likes to create meaning because that is the essence and the energy of being God. And we do this because this is what we do. And we say what things are. And the world respond to us and our world respond to us because we are writing our own story and we are telling ourselves truths instead of the lies we've been saying because the lies just make you you feel like you in pain too so i just know that's the facts i just know that's the facts family i'm just gonna let y'all know that is what it is i cannot i cannot make that sound better i don't know how to do that i just feel like i explained it this is how i could picture it I can show y'all these two threads and show, show y'all that we're always creating meaning. Always. So if next time you look at your bank account, what is the meaning you create? Because that speaks for your identity and where you're standing from in your consciousness. And I can give you guys a suggestion where I'm standing at least right now to process me recording this video because I'm getting a study after I get off this bitch. You dig what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just always learning, bro. I don't know. I'm just always learning. Boom. So look. If I look at my bank account and it say something that it's not supposed to say from the context of where I want it to be, 
do I say, oh man, I'm broke, I gotta fucking, what do you say? Because <laughs> if you say that, what I just said, you know, your energy is on a different, you're going in a different type of direction. <laughs> but even though we are still investing, we are still growing our money, because in the context, if you're not investing, then you just probably feel like your money's going to end because you don't feel like money is ever growing, like we always breathing. And it's, it just continues flowing the same way that it's just been flowing this whole time. Like, can you ever really think of a time when you're just dead broke? Well, yeah, that one time. Well, how was you managing it? Well, I wasn't managing that well. Oh, when I started managing it good, then it was like, oh, okay, well, maybe if you just keep managing it, what are you going to say? What are you going to say? What are you going to say? I know I was going to tell y'all what I will say, but I don't think what I will say is important because I'm going to change my shit tomorrow, but I'm going to let y'all know what it is for right now, at least today. So, boom, I come to the conclusion that I know that I'm a seed of God. I know that I am born from prosperity, riches, wealth, and abundance. And I just know that. I just know that. Like, just looking on the planet Earth, like, I'm from the Earth. Like, just looking at the Earth, and when I say I'm from the Earth, I'm talking about my body, and my essence is from spirit. So I know I'm just here because I am all of it. Air, wind, water, fire. Got the hot breath, got the cold. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so... I know that I'm a prosperous being, and I know that I come from a lineage of prosperity and all the things I just mentioned, because I didn't come from myself, I came from a place, right? And although I am all of those things, in my past story, I might not have seen money, but that does not mean anything about how today is and how tomorrow I'm about to see. Because I put my money to work, so that's how I see it. That's me. That's where I'm at right now. And uh, if that works for you, that's dope. If it don't, then that's dope too because I like to know because, uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just always, always going to grow. You know what I'm saying? I feel like this has helped me to stabilize where I'm at right now. This has helped me to uh, develop different businesses that I can uh, do this as a real uh uh, passion in a context because I know there's a lot of things that I can do to help in a different direction but I don't want to turn this into work in a form it's weird I'm still figuring that shit out that's the reason why I haven't been on here on here on here on here on here on here but I'm learning how to be consistent I'm being consistent I'm being consistent so that being said I appreciate y'all for watching this video uh, <laughs> uh, what's, what else I want to say Hey, shine that real light. You got the real codes coming out. And uh, yeah, the word conjecture is a word like, uh, oh yeah, let me tell you this. To not make meanings. How to not make meanings. I think I might just make this a whole separate video. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to do it right after this. I'm going to talk to y'all again soon. All right, peace.